Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Ignite Fire podcast. My name is Jacob. We got a special guest in the house, Josh McDermott, and he is the business owner of The Honey Badge Health, and he has a pretty sexy honey badge on his chest, and we're going to be talking about health. So what you do is health, business, life, faith, I mean, all around life coach, right? Yeah, pretty much all of it. So uh, I'm a certified uh, independent Optavia coach. Okay. Okay. Uh, so I use their programs, their products. Yeah. Um, but the cool thing is it's like a personal development program with the health component. Yeah. So uh, help people, um, mind, body, spirit, uh, finances, create business. Yeah, uh, yeah. All the above, man. And so, and your your background too, just so the audience knows, is uh, you, are, you were a retired police officer? Uh, retired because I started health coaching. Yeah. Okay. So, so, so you're a, you're a police officer for a long time though. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Marine first, okay. um, started out of high school. Okay. Uh, straight from high school, straight into the pros, but Marine Corps and then, uh, law enforcement from about 20 and security about 2011 to, mm -hmm. uh, 2021. Okay. Okay. Then, uh, and then through all of that, I mean, all, I mean, being a Marine and then also being a police officer, it's pretty physical, right? Yeah. And so you, so were you taking care of yourself or did you get to a point where things were a little uncomfortable? No, physically? It, it was, uh, so Marine Corps is pretty much like, uh, especially when you're single, you wake up, you PT. So physical training, uh -huh. you work out, um, you go to work, you know, you're eating all day and then you're drinking <laughs> and then usually show up to PT, you know, still intoxicated. <laughs> that was kind of a lifestyle the habit I created. And then, uh, I got married the last two years I was in the Marine Corps. Uh huh. And so then you take that life and then you take it to married life and uh, a baby and then meeting the demands of the Marine Corps. And then, uh, it was getting, and I got injured the last, uh, the last year that I was in, had two surgeries on my ankles uh -huh. and then, uh, that didn't help. And then I went into, um, the police, ac well, security and then the police academy after that. So the police academy got back in decent shape. Mm -hmm. Uh, but then once I got in the streets, I mean, it's overtime late nights gas uh, station um and when you don't really have the habits and you don't have the knowledge to begin yeah. with it's like oh, i'm just gonna work out well <laughs> at about 33 that we know when you your testosterone lowers and uh when you've just beaten your body up so much um it just caught up so mm -hmm. um yeah, basically it was lack of knowledge. Yeah, and then lack of caring to find out. So yeah. owning that uh, and saying like, well, I didn't really put it forth an effort to do anything else besides work out because mm -hmm. uh, I was addicted to food. But uh, yeah, it, it, so now I go back and I help a lot of uh, veterans and law enforcement because mm -hmm. I know that lifestyle and I know both sides of it—the healthy side, the unhealthy side. So, so when was that point when when? Uh so you so did was there a, a health crisis? Was there something that was going on that that set you up to where this became your your life? Where when did you make a transition? Like what happened? You know. So because if you know, I mean, because because being physical and all that is is pretty awesome, and then letting your health kind of get stagnant. You know, there usually there's a point in someone's life where they're like, oh man, I need a, I can't I can't see my. <laughs> My gut's getting too big. Where'd it go? <laughs> yeah. So uh, basically, uh, and I, I've been SWAT team, you know, in SWAT team, you go, you train, and then you guys all go to lunch together, and um, you just keep pushing, pushing. And I just lived that lifestyle for so long. Uh huh. And I was always, I, my identity was in the big guy. So mm -hmm. I was like, oh, big, big Mac, you know? Yeah, yeah. And now it was probably, they called me that because I was probably eating a lot of Big Macs, but. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I was, my identity was in my size. So when it came down to like, my wife was like buying sugar free stuff in the house. And I'm like, get the real stuff. <laughs> like quit buying the low fat. I would get mad, dude. Yeah. Like mad. And she was trying to like gently tell me like, Hey bro, you're fat and you need to make a change. Um, and then that really came down to it. Because I was like, I had brain fog, sluggish, mm -hmm. tired. And I was forgetting stuff. And it came to the point, she's like, I'm going to take you to the doctor uh, to go for early onset of on, uh, Alzheimer's. Yeah, yeah. It was that bad. I would forget what I would say. And then I would forget where my sunglasses were, like, oh, on my head. Oh, yeah, yeah, Where's yeah. my phone? I'm like, where's my phone? My key. Oh, my gosh. I lost so many yeah. keys. And uh, it finally came down to it where because um, I'd go to work, come home, be tired, mm -hmm. sluggish, brain fog, 
uh, just exhausted. And I got three boys. Yeah. And they're like, come on, dad, let's play. Let's go. And I'm like, shut up. Leave me alone. Yeah. Yeah. It's grumpy. My body hurt, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, it was even a thing for me to take a breath, to hold, hold my breath, to tie my shoes, walk up the stairs out of breath. My back would hurt. Hold my one year old. And, uh, I would just tell him like, "Hey, I got I got to take a nap. When mm-hmm. Dad gets up, then we'll play." Yeah. Well, I'd take a nap. I'd wake up. I'm like, "Oh, it's too dark." I was still tired. Yeah, yeah. Let's play Call of Duty. Let's watch Netflix. Hey, let's get a pizza. Yeah. And of course, they're like, "Yeah." <laughs> so we'd eat, and I'd send them. To bed. And you were still in the force at this time oh, too. And- yeah. Oh dang. Yeah, okay. dude. Like scary, um, because I was so proficient with like de-escalation and all the. Tactical stuff. I had all the tools. Yeah. But probably would have been taken out by a heart attack. Dang. Okay. Or if I would have gotten a traumatic incident, probably would have died because my body was working so hard just to. Yeah. Because uh, I was about 90 pounds heavier. Oh, dang. Okay. Yeah. 90 so, pounds is, is yeah. a good amount. Well, that's, I would send these kids to bed and I'd get up and stay up and needed my me time because the whole day I was like, oh my gosh, I'm stressed, I'm tired. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then uh, finally my wife said, <laughs> to your original question was, the, the breaking point was, hey, like these kids want to hang out with you. They want quality time with you. And you've got three boys, which is what you wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, and you're missing out on the best part of their life. Yeah, yeah. Like you're telling them no later tomorrow. Tomorrow never comes. They're getting mm-hmm. disappointed. <laughs> they're losing faith in you. Yeah. And if you don't make a change, I can't like, they're not, you're not going to be around to see these kids graduate high school. Yeah. And she goes, plus, uh, you're not the Marine that I married. Um, you know. <laughs> so she just had to come out and <laughs> Oh yeah, she came out and said it. And she was like, you know, you uh you know, used to be really outgoing and go out and dance and you like to travel. Mm-hmm. Like now you just go home, you go to work, you come home, and that's it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and and everything was suffering. So the kids' relationship, yeah. our relationship was suffering. I mean, let's be honest, sex life was suffering. Mm-hmm. Um and uh, it was just a, a, a thing where she goes, you're pre-diabetic, you're mm-hmm. tired, you're always just sleeping all the time, yeah. you don't want to go anywhere. Plus, not even talk about the stress of the job of where I was mentally, mm-hmm. always hypervigilant. No, we're not going to Mexico. No, we're traveling oh, here. Oh, yeah. Um, all that stuff, too, played a part in, but it was a lot of it was caused by my physical health. But basically, she said, um, if you don't change, like you're not going to be around to raise these kids, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I can't raise them on my own. Yeah. And I'm tired of our whole life revolving around food, dates, family uh, dinners, movies, going out to eat. Everything we did revolved around food. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's also a backstory a lot of people don't know is that God was kind of closing the door on law enforcement for mm-hmm. me. And mm-hmm. I, I just lost my passion and my purpose. So at the same time, this health thing is going on. Mm-hmm. I'm like, man, I've made music videos. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's called Five O's on it. Uh, oh, dang. Santa Fe PD. That's on YouTube. We'll have to put it. We'll put it in the description. <laughs> I'll give it to you, bro. <laughs> okay. Get right. Get laugh. They're like, "Who is that guy?" Uh, you know, we did music videos. We did all the the dance things. I had an own little area on the plaza that I worked at, um, and then came and work at a, a department here in Arizona, and uh, I, I enjoyed it. I loved it. You know, um, and I was making the most money I ever made as mm-hmm. a cop, mm-hmm. and it was it was pretty cush. But I just lost that passion and purpose. So at the same time, this was going on the back end. Mm-hmm. And then she's like, well, you know, you've seen your family do this for eight, nine years. You know, they helped a ton of people. They they mm-hmm. still get a, an amazing residual income. Yeah. And they're still healthy. Like yeah. After they're all losing 850 pounds and staying healthy and, mm-hmm. and, and mm-hmm. just living healthy lives for kids and grandkids. She goes like. Ugh, this is a no brainer. Oh, that was the the health opportunity where she, where she okay all came together. Okay, um, which is how we got to Arizona. That that ties into it too. That's a whole nother God thing. While we're here in Arizona, but um, anyways, she's like, well, why don't you just health coach? Mm-hmm. And you need to get healthy anyways. Yeah, like you'd be great at it. And I, she's like, I'm gonna do it with you. And I was like, okay, let's go. Yeah, and so that's what all led into it was basically um, getting to my bottom where I was. I didn't want to go to work anymore, mm-hmm. tired, sluggish, like watching my family's life pass away. So I hit my, um, I hit my rock bottom, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. like to the point where I was like I couldn't see myself retiring in twenty twenty five years. Uh, okay, didn't even have an, an image. The vision's what that gone. Like. Everything's gone. Just oh my god, I never go again. Like how can I get off work today? Yeah, you yeah. Know? Oh man, I got the sniffle or, you know, if there was any like chance of me having the, the, whatever was going around in 2020, uh, <laughs> you know, it was like, 
I was like, oh, I'm going to call off because I don't want to take any chances. Yeah, and yeah. Just finding anything to do to just not was, be be at work. I was that miserable, man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's not me. So anyways, that's how that all came <laughs> uh, came together. So was so once you once you started making the change and got into health, how did that uh, how did your routine change? How did how did your structure come in? Eating oh, habits, dude. So, uh, I knew what I needed to do because my family's been doing this. So I reached out to my coach and mentor mm-hmm. now Dan Valentine, and uh, I was like, "Hey, bro!" Like he worked with my family, and mm-hmm. we didn't know we knew of each other, but didn't know each other. And I told him who I was, and he's like, "Oh, cool, man." And I said, they're, they're very successful in the um, home, home, home marketing space, direct sales space. Okay. Like just, they wouldn't want me bragging on them, but they're, they're, they're top they're, of the game. Yeah. And so I, I said, Hey, this is what I want to do. I want to get healthy. I want to get my life back mm-hmm. and I want to quit my job and do this full time. So you didn't do it alone. No. So for those that are watching you, mm. if you're wanting to, to change your life, don't do it alone. If you could have done it already, done it on your own, you would have done it already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you would have done it. So don't even quit fooling yourself because you're lying yourself into your into your grave, uh, and your dreams are going with you. So yeah. Oh, sorry guys, I just went to the VA and got a full thing of blood done. <laughs> uh, getting my blood work done. Oh man, I, I I get woozy when they take blood. <laughs> oh man, it's embarrassing. They were like, "Are you gonna be okay?" I was like, uh, "Do you, does that happen to you?" No, I I was oh, okay. I'm one of the things like that doesn't bother me. Yeah. Oh, which as a swap medic, I guess would be a good, oh, okay, okay, yeah. good thing to have. But uh, they were taking it like, they just keep taking it, dude. Like, are you all right? I'm like, I'm good. I'm good. Like, you, I fast for like 12 hours yeah. the night before. And uh, I had my protein shake there. I'm like, I'm chugging that thing as soon as I get done. But yeah. I'm good to go, man. So, Dude, yeah, they, they take four vials from me and everything's turning white. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm getting up and I'm, I'm, turning, I'm, turning, I'm, turning, I'm turning into Bambi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like wobbling down. I'm like, oh no! They're trying to get me orange juice and cookies, and I'm like, oh no! Patting your head with a towel, yeah. <laughs> oh man, I'm bad with it. My wife laughs. She's well, she's a nurse, you know what I mean. So she's uh, she she sees this stuff all the time. But I see any blood, anything, I'm, I get a little woozy. She's like, suck it up, bro. Uh huh. Nurses. <laughs> to your point, don't do it alone. Yeah. Don't don't do it alone because if you would have done it, could do it on your own. You've already done it. So. Um, reached out to my coach and then basically at what I was doing was um, learning how to help other people and serve other people as I was doing it. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to be authentic and share my story from day one. Plus I need the accountability because mm-hmm. my wife's accountability was not enough. Yeah. Yeah. Cause uh, yeah, I'm good. Oh, a little bit of this, a little bit of that. And I mean, let's be honest guys, your, your wife isn't, isn't a good accountability partner. Just, just she's not, <laughs> we, we, we guys, guys need other guys. You know what I mean? And it's not their job to babysit. Yeah, right? exactly. Because I was. A big- oh man. Okay. That. So I talk a lot about this, and I say, you know, I'm not an advocate for baby crying. You know what I mean? And when you're with your wife, she's not. She's not with a boy. She wants a man. She wants a leader. You know, be strong. And if you got issues or things, it's good to talk with them about it, but not from a place of weakness. You want to be strong for them. You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's just my personal opinion. Yeah. Yeah. There's things that you should talk about and there's things yeah. that you should go get a therapist and talk about. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you, you don't want to use your wife as your therapist and you don't want to use your wife for certain things. You well, know? because that way there's a way at their um, security. Yeah. Yes. Yes. If you're, if you're worried and you're like, uh, this is like, if you got, Talk about your feels. Talk about your feels. You're talking to a really unempathetic guy here. Yeah. God's working on me. <laughs> I'm with you, though. <laughs> My wife all the time, she's like, dude, you have no feeling. I'm like, I I, I can't help it. And yeah. I talk to other Marines. They're like, yeah, that's normal, dude. Um, But there's – talk about what you need to talk about. But yeah. Don't erode the – the security that she feels because then that causes. Yes. And that's, and that's my whole point. You, you want to be strong. And when all of a sudden you, you become a weak man and, and the woman is like, well, well, who am I with? You know, who's, who's going to protect me when things go down emotionally, spiritually, physically. And so I think it just leaves a, uh, it, 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 it messes with the dynamics of how God set up the home. So anyways, that's, it, that's my little rant. That's it. <laughs> it all fits together. That's the cool thing is, Everything that I'm going to talk about today uh-huh. is all congruent to everything. That's why, yeah. that's why I love my business. That's why I love what I do because it, it's, I keep turning away from the mic. Uh, 
it's it all goes together. Yeah. You can't you can't be strong spiritually without being and you can argue with you can argue this with me, but show me your results and show me your lifestyle, and then I'll just I'll prove my point. Yeah. Your spiritual life and your physical life and your finances all go together. Absolutely. Mental health all go together. Mm-hmm. You can't you can't have you can't be super strong in all these other areas and be super weak in the others. Yeah. It just doesn't work. Oh yeah. So that's my word to pastors is um uh, let's let's talk about it all, even let's the buffet, even let's the waistline. Um, yeah, you know we got to put it all out there, and we got to be congruent um, because God God wants. Let's face it, God wants fit leaders. Yes, we're supposed to take care of our temples, and if you're up there oh, yeah. preaching, and you're not in the shape, there's some people that tune you out. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, when I'm looking at people, I'm like, man, mm-hmm. where's the undisciplined? If we're undisciplined in this area, what else is? What other secrets do we have? What are, Absolutely. Anyways, that's how my mind works. So. Well, and this is kind of going <laughs> along with my, so I, I'm, I'm making a controversial book and it's on anger. And, and the whole thing is, I don't believe we should have anger. And, uh, and that's, and that causes a lot of rift with, with, uh, with guys and ladies, because they want to hold on to the right to be angry, which leaves a root of bitterness, which leaves them trapped. And then all of a sudden their emotions are actually running them. They're not running their, they're mm-hmm. not, uh, regulating their emotions and it's it's going to be a book on next level emotional management and so so that's really what it is and oh. so, and so I, so we have emotions but i don't uh want those emotions to like i said rule over me and anger i think is one of the biggest things that every uh, that is the root of every addiction food um, I'm gonna have to get everything. you a copy of the life book because actually oh, oh. in the program that I coach, uh-huh. one of the elements is managing your stress and your emotions. Oh, okay. And okay. a lot of things that we work on as health coaches, even in our personal development is uh, emotional intelligence. Oh, okay. So, yeah. and, and, and that's what we talk about. And Dr. A talks about your, your, your emotions and you know, we stop challenge and choose. We mm-hmm. take control of the emotions because the emotions can cause us to, oh, I'm, yeah. I'm stressed. I'm gonna eat stress yeah. eating. Mm-hmm. I'm mm-hmm. angry. I'm gonna, I'm an angry eater. Sometimes yeah. I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh, that pissed me off. Like, give me a graham cracker. Yeah, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, and I have to be cognizant of that. But that's one of the things that. So that's funny. So all this stuff goes. That's together. that's yeah. This is awesome. <laughs> it's all this is plugged into this, man. Yes. Yes. Oh, uh, can't do it alone. Okay, yeah. That's You're keep, he's keeping us on track today. I'm, 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 I'm sharp, bro. <laughs> Got my essential amino acids. Check them out. Uh, well, and I think that's part of the whole health thing uh, because uh, I was watching a, a Netflix doc- documentary on on food and what you're eating, vegan versus meat, and they, they, it's it's there's some biases in there. But one of the things that they were sharing was uh, on the foods that we eat can cause early set Alzheimer's. And cause a lot of physical uh, problems as we continue to eat unhealthy, and so it's pretty interesting. All everything is driven by money, mm-hmm. and so mm-hmm. even the food industry, right? And I'm not going to oh, get yeah. into conspiracy theories and all that, <laughs> but it's proven mm-hmm. that there's chemicals, that there's hormones. Yeah. Oh ba- yeah. Basically, like drug dealers, they cut their product. You know, they they try to maximize what they have. It's yes. the same thing in the food industry, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. then they make it smell good, and they put chemicals in there to addict you. Mm-hmm. And then the restaurants pump the smell out into the streets. Oh yeah, you know, I so, can smell Burger King all the way down the street, bro. And then <laughs> my son will not eat Burger King when he heard that you'll get man boobs from the <laughs> good <laughs> from the meat. Good. <laughs> so he's like, I don't want it. At least he cares. Some guys yeah. are like, well, oh, it's okay. Yeah. It's a dad bod. I'm like, no, no, no. <laughs> no. It's not a dad bod when you're looking like the mom, okay? Yes, yes. So anyways, I, I don't I don't care. I, I, so I try to be uh, 100%, but mm-hmm. I don't want to be a stumbling block to people in their faith. So yeah, yeah. if I offend you, just take it with a grain of salt. Well, on this channel, I tell people if they're offended, be offended. Because yeah. we want to we, we want to uh, be an echo of truth. We want we we we. I love to entertain. I love to be funny. I love, but but I want to tell the truth too. You yeah. know what I mean? And sometimes the truth will hit you like a wet dish rag, <laughs> slap you pretty hard. Uh huh. <laughs> if you don't like it here, don't go to my Facebook. <laughs> so don't get on my lives. But uh, you can't do it alone. <laughs> can't do it alone. That's that's it. The food and what you put in, garbage in, garbage out. Same thing mm-hmm. when you listen. Mm-hmm. But can't do it alone and. Uh, so basically, 
my coach guided me through. Mm-hmm. And the first three days I went through like a detox and it was just by eating the food, drinking the water, getting rid of the nasty stuff in my body. Yeah. Uh, day four, I was down four pounds. Just from doing that? Just, dude, eating six times a day, every two to three hours, drinking at least 64 ounces of water. Yeah. Yeah. Um, making one meal on my own. They provided everything else. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. no food prep. Yeah. I didn't have to, he's like, Hey, eat this, drink your water. Mm-hmm. That was it. When it came to making my one meal, yeah, portion of protein, three portions of greens, healthy fat, told me exactly how to do it. Yeah. In the Marine Corps, we call that Barney style, mm-hmm. ABC, one, two, three. <laughs> and, uh, but it takes all the guesswork out, right? Oh dude. Yeah. It's so simple. And then I checked in with him the first four days. Mm-hmm. Day four, I hit fat burn. And dude, I felt the best I'd ever felt. Dang. I, you know, I, I drank a lot even in, in as a as a teenager. So I don't think I ever felt how I felt mm-hmm. uh, at 33 years old. I was like, oh my gosh. I mean, I had the best sleep I had since boot camp veterans. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> uh, just felt amazing. And then 12 days, this came up on my Facebook, 12 days I was down 13 pounds. And I was like, dude, my clothes are fitting better. My acid reflux, IBS was going away. Yeah. I have psoriasis. My psoriasis was clearing up and I was like, dude, this is amazing. Yeah. Three months, 50, five, zero pounds down. And my joints, I'm hundred percent dis- disabled for the Marine Corps. Uh-huh. Um, arthritis, you name it. I freaking got it. Um, and my body just quit hurting. Like the Dang. aches, I would say it's literally like a weight. It's was like the inflammation was, t- was gone. I re- oh dude. Inflammation went down, uh, swelling. Like it was just yeah in my joints. It was exactly 50 pounds on the dot. And then six months, I was 86 pounds down in six months. Oh, dang. Zero exercise. <laughs> Except for- Some work. people are struggling to lose five to 10 pounds in six months. <laughs> it, 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 just just give me a call. Yeah. Uh, it, it, uh, it was six, six months, 86 pounds down- Eating, drinking, reading the life book, yeah. working on this. I was already getting results on the front end, so I didn't have to mm. focus on working out and food prepping. I focused on doing this. Yeah, the, yeah. Fit, the body was doing its job mm-hmm. just by what I was t- putting into it. And then uh, <laughs> then I got to the point where my wife said, I had six pack. I was like, yeah, feeling good, you know? <laughs> and uh, she goes, hey, awesome job, but you're too skinny to start working out. <laughs> So, but that's better than being too fat, though. All right, that's it. So then, uh, that's when the silkies come into play. The short okay. shorts. And if you guys have, you guys got to follow this guy on Instagram. He got these uh, pretty sexy silkies. He's got me in the little shorts now because uh, I want to show off my legs. So you gave me the confidence to start showing off these legs. <laughs> and that's what I do as a health coach, man. As I empower people, ask me what I do, and I say, well. I help people freaking win. And they go, how do you do that? And I say, well, I, I empower people. Yeah, yeah. I help stuck, hardworking men and women <laughs> get unstuck and freaking give them the confidence. Like, if that dude can do it, yeah. anybody can. Uh, but that's that's where like, really I started wearing the silkies again. And, and the story behind that is I, I felt mm-hmm. better than I did when I was in the Marine Corps. Oh, okay. And I was about the same size because I think yeah. I got down to 179 and – in the early part of the Marine Corps, before I started drinking real heavy, I was mm-hmm, like mm-hmm. 185. Oh, okay. And then uh, put on about 50 pounds of muscle, um, and which led, you know, I, I maxed out as much as I could and led me to go, mm-hmm. which I don't like to go to the doctor, but part of health is preventive health. It's like, he got low testosterone. Oh, yeah. That's, like, a, that's a big thing for guys over 30, correct? Like, yeah. You start losing it. And like, it was like, I was like, man, why did I get these? I still got the, the Chi-Chi's, man. Like, mm-hmm, I'm working mm-hmm. out. Um, and I had like 200 level testosterone. So guys, uh, okay. do, do the obvious thing first, fix, fix the nutrition. Mm-hmm. That's the big thing. Nutrition mindset, get the weight off. The fat's killing your testosterone. It's making you feminine. Mm. 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 Fat is making you feminine. You know, I was listening to a, another life coach and, uh, talking about feminism and men. And, uh, he was saying, he goes, guys, don't argue with your wives. He's like, if they're upset. You know, let them be upset and let them, you know, voice what they need to voice. He's like, stop arguing with your wife. He goes, you can't have two women arguing. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> yeah, dude. I was, I was like, oh, oh, he said, take, take control of yourself. He's like, be there for your wife. You know, she may be right. She may be wrong. He's like, but just listen and, and stop arguing. He's like, you're being like your mama. <laughs> don't, don't be like your mama. Don't be I like was your like, mama. Oh, Okay. 
Uh, my wife doesn't like this guy, but I, I love him. I think he's great. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a reason why she doesn't like him because he's he's coming out with some hard truth. You know what I mean? He, yeah. And uh, <laughs> so I've been adopting some of those, and and it, I, I see the biblical references too, and it just makes it even better. You know, he's just saying it in an offensive way. Yeah. Because he wants to ruff, ruffle some fe- feathers, but it's, he's he's telling the truth though. Some people like me for that, and some people dislike me for that. Mm-hmm. But I found that people want to be coached at a high level. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because everybody, and I tell people, I probably wouldn't have been gotten to the point, which I'm glad I did because that's where I'm, I'm, life is awesome now. But if people would have been real mm-hmm. and probably not talked about me behind my back, I'm like, damn, these are uh, fat. Yeah. Like, Dang. Like, what's up, Big Mac? But it told me from yeah. the get-go, other than Lydia. Lydia told me, but I we don't listen yeah. to wives. We should listen to our wives, but we don't. Uh then my life probably would have been different. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So I don't want somebody else's blood on my hands because I'm sugarcoating it or I'm cheerleading. You know what I mean? Like Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you don't like what you hear and you're not ready for the truth, you can unfriend, you can unfollow. Yeah, yeah. You can block me and uh, that's okay Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because I'm not here for the people that aren't ready. I'm here for the people that are. Yeah. And that's the same thing with our Christian walk. Oh, yeah. Right? We don't need to change the, the the message to suit people that may be uncomfortable hearing it. We 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 share the message. Take your sandals off <laughs> and then move on. Dust them off. <laughs> move to the next town. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And so that's the cool thing is, is there's people that are like, man, I love your lives. Mm-hmm. Thank you. That hit me. And I get messages like every day. Man, yeah. Thank you for doing that. Um, I don't ever, I'll get one or two comments where people are like, well, what about this? That was kind of mean. And I'm mm-hmm. like, and everybody else, I don't even have to say anything. Yeah. When when you're when you're coming from a place of love and authenticity, um, people will fight for you mm. and stand up for you. Yeah. Like I don't do drama on Facebook. Yeah. If yeah. somebody wants to start drama, they're either off of Facebook or people yeah. come on and put it. I don't know how we got there, but <laughs> anyways. Well, talking about that, I, let, 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 let me just say, um, it's interesting people that talk dr- uh, drama and leave nasty comments right online uh on this channel as we've been growing some people will leave some some comments and i and i'm thinking to myself how big of a loser do you have to be to watch someone else live in their life and then watch what they're doing take the time to leave a comment that is negative you know what i mean they they they, and and i say that you know how big of a loser but to be honest it's sad you know what i mean because they're not living the life that they want and they're critiquing others, you know? Yep. It's like, I'm watching someone else live their dream, so I'm going to comment on that. <laughs> and I'm not even going to read it. So if you want to leave something here, I'm not even going to read it <laughs> because I'm going to go after this, I'm going to go help people change their lives. Yeah. And I'm going to go work with a couple people that are working on a six-figure income. Yep. Making yep. a six-figure income. So I'm not going to sit around <laughs> and re- actually, I like, I might read them like some of my unwinding time. Uh-huh. I like to just go look. It's an old cop thing, yeah. old confrontation thing. I'm like, oh man but I won't engage, but I probably won't read it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. just not where focus goes, energy flows. Ooh, that's, I like that. So I stole I that like from that. my mentor, Dan Valentine, but uh, where focus goes, energy flows. So um, I'm focused on cheering people on, supporting them. Um, first of all, building the kingdom, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, making men and win, women healthy so they can go build the kingdom. I'm, I'm working on, helping people build, you know, a couple hundred dollars, a couple thousand dollars a month, six yeah. figure incomes, over $8,000 a month. Yeah. Um, because good people making good money, do great things. Yeah. And that's where my focus is at. And, and being a better husband, being a better dad, mm-hmm. you know, working on that stuff. So, um, yeah. And we need that. Peter's we need that, eat. especially in the Christian community. We need to be healthy. We need to be financially stable. We need to be able to be leaders. We need to be able to be strong and uh, and combat the evils of this world. That's it, man. If you're not physically in it, you're not mentally in it. Mm-hmm. And if you're not physically mm-hmm. mentally in it, your spirit life always takes a back seat. Oh yeah, oh yeah, always takes a back seat. So yeah, man. So it was. Uh, it got to the point of like, oh, I did whatever everything that I could do. Mm-hmm. Got my weight off. Uh, got the nutrition. Got structured. And then uh, that provided a discipline, provided a habit over the six months, mm-hmm. checking in with my coach, uh, had a supportive community around me. Mm-hmm. That was super important. People cheering me on. Because we're, because we're, isn't it, uh, we are 
the um the most the was it the what's the saying the you, sum of the five for, people for, hanging around the most why am i stumbling over my words yeah yes because <laughs> you're hosting yes <laughs> here i'm just here the sum of I'm the of responding. the five people yes yeah that's it and uh that's one of the things that we love about our community yeah um when we bring clients in one of the first things <laughs> i just gotta say something to the, to the audience so if you are are the sum of the five people that you're around that means get get away from your mama and your daddy if you're married uh get away from all 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 the friends that aren't that aren't doing anything in, with their lives and start changing who you're around with and who you want to be that's those are the people you want to be around so just wanted to do a little side oh part. that's it people are like well you know i can't do this can't do that i'm broke yeah who are you hanging around yeah I'm out of shape you're li- and then and then this is a this is a this is the it really bugs me but stop taking advice from people that you would not trade places oh, with. Oh, that right there. Well, that right there. That sounds like an MLM that you're doing, or oh man, <laughs> that you know, I don't. That doesn't look sustainable. I love when people tell me like, "Well, oh, you're super low calorie," and I, I just finished like two workouts, and I've only had like fifteen hundred calories. Yeah, yeah. They're, or they tell me it's like it's all about the calorie. It's like <laughs> no about what you put in and getting a healthy lifestyle. But anyways, don't do not. Take advice from people that you don't want to trade places with. Mm. It will keep you unhealthy. It'll keep you broke. It'll keep you in religion, a spirit of religion. Oh, yeah. Um, that it, was one of, one, of, one of my mentors. Uh, before I got my mentor, someone had mentioned, when you're trying to find a mentor, don't find someone you can relate with. Find someone that you want to be like. Yes. And when I got that, it just changed everything, you know? Dude, that is, so like our... Our mentorship, all lines of our mentorship mm-hmm. are, are multimillionaires. Yeah. They're always leveling up in their spirit, their mind, their body, and they're super abundant. Mm-hmm. And that's part of the reason we live where we live. Yeah. In Arizona, proximity, guys, it's huge. You can't, you know, and Ed Milet talks about this too, is you got to get a taste mm-hmm. of the things in your future. So if you want, because that drives you, you know, mm. I, I recently bought a, a truck that I really like uh-huh. because, and, it, and debt, did it debt free, just did, yeah. did it all the right way because I needed to wet my whistle. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's an Escalade. I'll say it. I'm not ashamed to say it, mm-hmm. but it's not the newest. And we, should, and we shouldn't be, you know, it's not, it's not the, it's not the newest. It's not the best, but it's new to me and mm-hmm. I've always wanted it. And to get to the next level, mm-hmm. you got to wet your whistle. Yeah. You got to You got to have the vision. And Ed Milet says, you, you know, you got to, um, he would go and he would spend a day out golfing mm-hmm. or a day at the Ritz, um, all they could afford to go and be like, oh man, because it inspires. Mm-hmm. It inspires mm-hmm. you to go to that next level. So getting in proximity, yeah. doing those things, exposure, mm-hmm. I think he calls it exposure, but also proximity, like everybody in our circle mm-hmm. either is just super respected in the spiritual world, yeah. like um, pastors that are not just great pastors and speakers, but um, you know, they're doing the thing, healthy, mentally, physically, spiritually, they live it outside. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. We hang around like our mentors are, are multimillionaires. Yeah. What, because why? Cause I want to be multimillionaires and they, they give, you know, so much away mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. they're so generous and abundant. Like, yeah. I want to catch that, but you only catch it. If you're near it, because I want to be like, man, I want to be more yeah. like that. And how do I start doing that now where mm-hmm. we're at? Mm-hmm. Um, but if you don't have that example, mm-hmm. if you don't have that community and those people around you, you don't know what that looks like. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And so that's why I love our community because I've got guys uh, that are pushing me like, hey, dude, getting kind of chubby. Or, you know, <laughs> they're like, hey, man. Keeping did you, you accountable. <laughs> did you do that Spartan? Did you do that marathon? And, um, we're pushing each other higher. We're not yeah. calling people out. We're calling them up. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we're pushing each other, but having a coach, having the accountability, the guidance, mm-hmm. the structure, someone there to empower you and, and to teach you how to fish, not just give you the fish. Oh, that's good. The community that's of good. like-minded people, because iron sharpens iron. You become like who you hang around. Yeah. And the more that you engage in the community, the more empowered you are. Mm-hmm. And the more layers of accountability that you have, the better your results will be. Yeah, no yeah. matter what you do. See, and 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 I think that there that an aspect of what you just said has been taken out of context and and misused in the Christian church, where you teach a man how to fish, you don't just give him the fish. 
And there's so many charities, and I'm and I'm not saying anything. There's no, nothing wrong with charity, but there's there's so many charities that are just trying to give people something instead of trying to teach them to be something. You yep. know what I mean? Yeah. And and uh, if we were if we were helping them in both of those areas, it'd be a different type of uh, society, I believe. Yeah. Well, it's like it's it's how it's designed. You know, teaching men how to be men. Yeah. You know, so that oh, yeah. this 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 world can carry on, but um, in power. If we're not empowering, we're enabling. Ooh. And we all know what enabling does. Oh, yeah. It just creates more dependence uh, yeah. on yeah. whatever it is. So, And then it drains. Mm-hmm. You know? mm-hmm. It becomes a drain. So, um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm all about empowerment. And that's always something I'm still working on mm-hmm. because I'm like, I want to, this is the answer. Look, this works. Just do it. <laughs> yeah. Like, get here. But it's like you have to step back, especially with kids. Yeah. Like, all right, you got to step back and empower them for them to gain the confidence. Let them make their mistakes. Let yeah. them do, but but still be there to kind of help, you know. <laughs> yep. So, well, so as we're as we're uh, bringing this to a close, somebody's watching right now, and they're like, "Man, that's awesome! How do I get connected with you? How do I get in your inner circle? Uh, what opportunities are open for people that are watching right now?" Awesome. Uh, well. You can hit me up on Facebook. Okay. Um, Josh McDermott. It's a picture of my wife and I and kind of our before and, and after I, stories. And I'll put some of those uh, links in the description. So as, as soon as you send those, I'll have that in the, the description. Boom. I'll put that there. Uh, Instagram, Josh McDermott 87. Mm-hmm. Um, that, that's usually the best ways to get a hold. And then, okay. uh, you know, my number, I don't even care. 505-803-8391. Mm-hmm. So now all YouTube has it. So it's out there. <laughs> um, you know, Shoot me a text message. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, as you'll find out, my phone's always on do not disturb, so you won't bother me. <laughs> but um, if you're stuck and you're, you mm-hmm. know, and you're struggling and you feel like, oh my gosh, you've done all the things and you can't figure it out, um, you don't have to stay stuck. Mm. Basically, what I do is I have a conversation. Mm-hmm. I listen to to what their goals are and what they're looking to accomplish. Yeah, and basically see if what I do is a good fit and what they're looking for. And if it is, I help them choose the best path and go from there. And then what we do is teach them how to live a healthy lifestyle, mm-hmm. get the results on the front end, healthy lifestyle, and then transition from weight loss. Cause you can't live in weight loss. You'll be in a yo-yo. It needs to be a lifestyle. I'm, I'm three years in. So, uh, almost in March will be three years. Yeah. Lost the 86 pounds, kept it off. And you're looking good. You're looking good on camera, man. Appreciate it. <laughs> uh, Spartans, Tough Mudders doing that stuff. So, um, you know, I've, I've lived it and it's documented since day one. Yeah. Helping over 1,800 people. Um, well, almost, right at 1,800 people now. Yeah. Uh, in these three years. But uh, the other the other service that I offer is mm-hmm. the, the business services. Yeah. Helping people to create a couple hundred dollars, a couple thousand a month. Mm-hmm. Um, that six figure, whatever income they're looking for uh, as a side hustle or you know, if they're looking for a meaningful side hustle, they just mm-hmm. want to create <laughs> today, pay for groceries mm-hmm. um, or gas money, or they want to take their kids on vacation or like, Hey, I want to work from home mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. I love my job and I want to do this on the side. Or maybe I, I'm looking, f- I have that thing in your gut, you know, where you're like, man, it's gotta be something more mm-hmm. um, and create a full-time income. So I don't only just help people get healthy and, mm-hmm. and, and lose weight and stay healthy for a lifetime. Yeah. But we're helping create dreams and make yeah. those things happen and um, create legacy and all that stuff. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, Josh McDermott, if you're ready to level up your life, your health, your fitness, go ahead and hit those links in the description and start and get connected with Josh. Uh, thank you, Josh, for coming on the podcast and sharing with us and uh, inspiring people to level up. Appreciate it. One more thing. Yeah. Is this. And I'm, I'm going to look at the camera when I say this, is that I cannot help you until you make the decision. Ooh. But once you make that decision, I will not let you fail. Because I've been there. I know what it feels like. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching today's episode. Don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that notification button. And until next time, we love you. God loves you. And God bless. Peace.